Meanwhile, uh, Mick Mulvaney is out there now, and there. This is I. I I I, I don't know what drives Mick Mulvaney to think that uh, opening up health care again is going to be a um, a helpful debate for the Republicans. And I can't imagine there's anything the the Democrats could have dreamt. Honestly, like I think I think if somebody had gotten up in the Democratic caucus meeting when they all got sworn in uh, in January and said, hey, I just want to say, guys, just wait till the Repu- to the White House um, tries to repeal and replace uh, Obamacare again, because then we're going to this is going to be great for us. And everybody in the room would have gone like. Uh, hey, newbie, have a seat. <laughs> the idea that they would ever, ever reopen this debate, it would just be astonishing uh, political malpractice. And however, uh, Mick, astonishing political malpractice Mulvaney uh, was on ABC's This Week uh, as he's doing his rounds. I, I want to ask you, we are eight and a half million people that are enrolled in Obamacare in, in 2019. You also had another 61 million at the very least who have pre-existing conditions. And have I been pause able- it for one uh, second. I just want to Clarify, I don't know why Carl put it that way. Um, there's eight and a half million who are enrolled in the um, in the exchanges. I think that number is up to like eleven and a half, but I don't know where he got the eight and a half in. But and then there's another about ten who are um, on Medicaid as part of the expansion of the Affordable Care Act because that will go too. That is part of the law. And so if the whole thing is de- deemed in that court case to be non-severable, that will go, too. And then, of course, as um, Carl makes the point, the PP part of the PPACA is the patient protection. Sixty one million people are protected by uh, that provision specifically on pre-existing conditions. That's why that has such salience, because that's actually now you're talking about a big chunk of the population that is not covered by Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, regular Medicaid uh, and existing Medicare. Well, now you're talking big numbers now. Um, and uh, and that is just a pure benefit. That's not like we've made it marginally more affordable. And so, uh, but continue. Existing conditions and have been able uh, to, to get health insurance in part because of the guarantee that they can get health coverage without, you know, under Obamacare, uh, even if they have pre-existing conditions. And also about six million Americans who are 26 and younger are on their parents' health plans uh, because of Obamacare. Can you guarantee that if you succeed in court, that all of those tens of millions of people who have health coverage guaranteed because of Obamacare will not lose their coverage? I don't think so. Yes, and here's why. Let's talk about pre-existing conditions because it gets a lot of the attention, and rightly so. Every single plan that this White House has ever put forward since Donald Trump was elected covered pre-existing conditions. Every single plan that Republicans in the House voted on in the previous Congress covered pre-existing conditions. Every single plan considered by the Senate covers pre-existing conditions. The debate about pre-existing conditions is over. Both parties support them, and anyone telling you anything different is Don't lying to you for political gain. Tell me it's raining. There you go. Um, uh, he he's 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 joking. It's April Fools. He, he's April Fools. He's joking about that. Um, now, uh, you don't need to take my word for it. The fact is, is that the pre-existing conditions forces insurance, private insurance companies to basically destroy their business model, which is let's insure people who will never use our product. And if they use our product too much, we boot them off for, uh, for going over the lifetime cap limits or the yearly cap limits or the way that we cut down on the odds that this person's going to need our services to make sure that they're not sick as they enter in because, uh, you know, one, one fifth of the uh, population is, you know, has had uh, problems in the past, which is a um, actuarially a, an indicator that they may have problems in the future. And so we can boot them off. Uh, and that is, that's the whole game there is, you know, that you, you need to basically say to insurance as a, an institution, um, you can't discriminate. Everybody gets it. And private insurance, there's no business model for that. 
to the extent that there is a business model, they have to lay off the costs on the government. So the government has to subsidize it. And that's what's happening in the exchanges. Or the employer has to subsidize it. Or the government has to subsidize private insurance by having Medicare for people at 65 and older. Because after pre-existing conditions, age uh, would be the next indicator of your likelihood of needing health insurance, whether it's prescription uh, drugs or whatnot. And so that's why Joe Liebman was all in favor of a 55 and older uh, buy into Medicare before the ACA, because the business model was broken. As the baby boomers aged, the business model became untenable. It was great when all the baby boomers were 30 and there were less people who were, you know, ages 40 to 65. The business model was better, but it was untenable. And so this is just a business that cannot work without uh, government subsidies. And so if we're subsidizing these uh, the companies at one point, you're just like, well, why? <laughs> why? Why? Every dollar we give them, we're basically flushing 20 cents down the down the toilet. We want to tap into the miracle of the profit motive, Sam. I mean, it's literally we're Competition flushing. would start kicking in. Probably more technically, 16 cents per dollar down the toilet and getting a subpar product to boot. Yeah, but what about the post office? They're, That's not too nice. Com they're competing to see who can rip people off the worst. Yeah, but if you think about it. That is what, literally what their business do? model. That's how they're rewarded by uh, by the stock market, which then just feeds a, a handful of people who um, whose whose uh, compensation is a function of that. Well, so, people could always decide to not go to the doctor. So, if they were good consumers, if they were good consumers.